Hi, I'm going to watch Thomas of Primary 6 from every primary school. For this time, we are going to have ordinary differential equations. But right now, for ordinary differential equations, we're going to learn many, many different types of methods. Each of these methods, we're going to learn them by exemplification. And through all these exemplifications, we will show you what types of methods can we use for every different types. Okay, so let's look at this example that we have here right now. This example, y six derivative plus sixty four y, and this is x to the power of six. So here we have two methods to choose from. First method. First method here can be the Euler's formula, and the second method can be by factorization. So these are the two methods that we can use. Well, we can choose any of these methods to use. But for this time, I'm just going to use method one, Euler's formula. So by the Euler's formula, but be careful, this part right now, it is linear. It is constant coefficient. It is non-homogeneous. Now this is non-homogeneous. We want to find the general solution for non-homogeneous ordinary differential equation. So it's made up of two parts. First part will be a general solution for the homogeneous ordinary differential equation. Second part will be the particular solution for non-homogeneous ordinary differential equation. These two parts. That means this yg, that is yh plus yp. So we have this thing. Next part then is we can first find yh. yh. How do we find this yh? Let's think. How can we find this y h? Well, definitely we have to take this x to the power of 6 just as a 0. So it's like this. But even if it is like this, what or how can we continue? What method will we use? Well, at this point, we just use the characteristic equations. Then next, you can move this 64 to the other side. So that means move to the other side is a negative 64. Then for lambda, no. We continue with this. This negative 64, you can split it in two. Negative 1 times 64. You can split it into like this. But what's next? What is the next part? Beware, this method is by the Euler's formula. So that means it's definitely we've got to use the Euler's formula. So at this part is when we can use it. So the Euler's formula, two parts. First part, cosine. Second part, I sine. Cosine. As here is only a negative one, that means it is definitely from the cosine. So cosine will be only if it is pi. Or just add on 2 pi, add on 2 pi, add on 2 pi. Then for the sine, sine pi is 0. Sine pi plus 2 pi is 0. Okay. So that means we can write it like this. Alright? Then for the next part, we will be finding lambda. So lambda for this part 
Yo, six root. Six root of sixty four would be a two. Then from this part, e to the power. That means just the power divided by six. Okay, so here divided by 6. Then after that, we'll just have to check for k. Since this is to the power of 6, that means there will be 6 roots. So 6 roots, that means let's start from k is 0. If k is 0, lambda number 1. 2e to the power of pi over 6 then times i okay this lambda 1 but we have to find out what this is so that at the end when we find the y edge we will be able to find out everything so that means you have cosine pi over 6 a cosine pi over 6. Cosine pi over 6. Is it square 3 over 2? Is it? Or is it half? So for this part, you have to think about it first. And these parts, you have to be really, really careful. So for this part, it will be half. Therefore, sine pi over 6, or you usually write i at the back, will be a square root of 3 over 2. Then that means this will be a square root of 3 over 2i. Alright. Since all these, and divided by 2. 2 times in. 1 plus square root 3i. Okay, so that means for these parts, well, this is the first one. k equals 0. Next, k equals 1. Then this will be lambda 2. Lambda 2. So here, 1 over 3, 1 over 3 and 1 over 6, that gives you a half. So that means when it gives you a half, okay, let's see, gives you a half. Pi over 2, pi over 2, right? Pi over 2, cosine pi over 2. Now, what is it? Cosine pi over 2, that will be a 0. Then sine pi over 2 will be a 1. Okay, sine pi over 2 will be a 1. So that thing makes it be able for us to find. So let me see how. Just put this inside. It'll be 2i. But for these things, you have to get all of them. Like, for example, if you just try to use this, but even if it is in a complex form, well, I don't think it will give you the actual answer here. As, well, you can try on your own. Okay. Wait a second. Wait. I mean, I said there's no opposite. Okay, yeah, it should have been like this. Okay, so you have lambda 1, you have lambda 2. Next, lambda 3. But we were, this is to the power of 6. It goes all down to lambda 6. 
Right now, we're just at lambda 3. Lambda 3. So here are two. They're just at this up. So get this. But for these parts, you also have to check in which quadrant they are in. For example here, 5 pi over 6. Now for 5 pi over 6, that will be the second quadrant. Okay, the second quadrant. Second quadrant is for sine and cosecant. Then it will be a negative cosine. Then positive sign. Okay, this is your lambda 3. Then k is 3. So you have lambda 4. So then you have 2e to the power of 3 here. Let me just add pi. So you get 7 pi over 6. I. This is in the third quadrant. In the third quadrant, it's for tangent and cotangent. Okay, that is both of them will be negative. <coughs> Wait. <coughs> okay. This is what you have. This right now here is lambda 4. Next, you have to find lambda 5. Lambda 5. 5 here. Okay, be careful of this. You'll get 11 pi over 6i. 11 pi over 6i. Where is it? 11 pi over 6. Is it sure? It's actually 9. So, 9 pi over 6, that means 3 pi over 2. Now, 3 pi over 2. For 3 pi over 2, which of them will give you a 1? Or a negative one. Do you know which one? Three pi over two. So you get a negative two i. The next is lambda six. Lambda six. Lambda six for this part. 5 sub all the way back inside here. It will be 2 times e to the power of 11 pi over 6 i. For this part, it's in the fourth quadrant. It's in the fourth quadrant. That means cosine will be positive. Sine will be a negative. Like this. Okay, so now you get these six roots. Next step to find is to find y edge. Okay, you have to find y edge. So using all of these. But why not? Let's just immediately change it. Okay, like for example, what I'm saying is that. For example, at this part, it will definitely become e to the power of this whole thing. Now, e to the power of this whole thing, you get e to the power of square root 3, the other times e to the power of i. Like this. You get things like this. So, for these parts, but I still can write down all of these. Well, for clear.
and all of these you'll have an X. Okay, so let me say this, all of these. After that, this will be equal to, okay, let's check. This part, it will give you, well, hyperbolic functions. So hyperbolic functions, let me just write all of them out. For example, here you use e to the power of ax. Use a to the power of ex. What do you have? Cosh AX and this hyperbolic function of sine. Then next, if this is negative. Then you get something like this. Then after that, this is the first part here. After that, when you have I in the power, you use the Euler's formula. Euler's formula. So you get all these four types. And that means in all of these, you'll get to use it. But you also have to be careful of some parts. For example, here and here. Because for this, we we'll use the Euler's formula. You get 2x. But here when you use Euler's formula, you just get x. Okay? You'll get C7, then E2. No, let's not use E. Okay, we use all these forms. Cosine. Now, what can we use for cosine? Cosine, for example, X. Then, if this is an X, then there is your gotta be a cosh or this. This will be square root 3x. Yes. Now that will be your sign. Then after that will be for your these two parts. This part, 2x. So you get your cosine and sine. So this is your y edge. Now we get this part for your y edge. How about YP? YP over here. YP, be careful. Here is X to the power of 6. <coughs> but this does not mean that 
There is only extra power of 6. You still have to write out all of them just for in case. Okay. Writing out all of these. That means you have the left. YP. That means you have to use A, B, C, D, E, F. And G. So next will be our sixth derivative. For sixth derivative from here, x to the power of six, you get six factorial coming down. And for that, well, if you want to be quick, you can actually use a calculator to help you check for that. Okay. That will be 728. Okay, so this is 728. Then next, you just have to find out all these. Firstly, 64, y. So 64 of this a, it gives you a 1. So a is 1 over 64. Then after that, here you still have another a. 64 g plus 728 and this gives you 0 so you can choose to move this to the other side well then you both sides try to simplify but if you want to simplify fast you can actually use this I mean, like both sides, well, you divide by the same thing. So then, after that, just straight away. Wait, here you have a negative. So G will be a negative 45 over 256. So for this part of YP, you'll get okay A 1 over 64 X to the power of 6 minus 45 over 256. Then finally for your YG. Or well, YG just this whole thing at that. Okay, so let me just write this more in front. Okay, so this will be your solution. So for right now, if you want to verify, you can verify it by yourself, but in the next class I'll verify it. So if you like our video, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and thank you for your watching.